All right, welcome back. Uh, so it's time to start the MQTT half of this thing. Uh, so MQTT is all about communication. The idea is, is that you've got a computer that's connected to the internet um, and it wants to talk to something else that's also connected to the internet. Um, just because you're both connected to the internet obviously means you can talk, but it doesn't mean you get it for free. And so MQTT is a system uh, for connecting to some other server. That other server is called the broker. Um, and you subscribe to topics and other people publish messages to topics. Uh, and that's how this communication works. Um, before we dive into the details, we're going to dive kind of deep. This video is kind of called Under the Hood. So I'm going to tell you some things in this video that you don't have to know but they're cool and I teach classes, so you're gonna learn about them. Um, and then in the modules, um, you're gonna not necessarily need everything I teach you here, but it's still cool stuff and you're gonna need to, to, to kind of understand how it works. So what I wanna do first is actually run a demo. Uh, so go ahead and open up your, uh, your project that you've been using for this course. Uh, find the examples area. Uh, find MQTT in the examples um, and find PC MQTT messages. One thing that's confusing about the MQTT is now we're going to have some programs that run on your computer uh, and some programs that run on the, the EV3's computer, right? So sometimes you're going to run programs on here, sometimes you're going to run it on your computer. And I try to label them either EV3 or PC, and you'll see that later. Uh, but for the time being, uh, we're, we're not using the EV3 for this. Uh, we're just running a program on your computer. Uh, so this program, it's called MQTT Messages. Uh, you can see there's quite a bit of Tekinter code in here, so it's going to be some type of GUI. Um, and we could kind of look at the details in here, uh, but we won't yet. We're just going to kind of run it. Uh, so run this program. Uh, and what it should do is it should pop up a window that kind of looks like this. So it's a Tekinter window. Um, and what I want you to do is um, notice uh, in your logs what got printed. Uh, and so it printed here... Um, publishing to topic, uh, and there's some name for a topic here. It's Lego 99 topic name, and subscribe to some topic. And in this example, which is kind of a weird example, we're publishing to a topic, and we're actually listening to that same topic. And so what will happen is uh, we'll, we'll listen to ourselves, right? So we're, we're talking on that topic, and we're going to also get our own messages back. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say, hello, my name is Dave Fisher uh, and then we're going to click on send uh, and it says hey I received a message uh, hello my name is is Dave Fisher um, and the important thing is that this goes to a server uh, then this bounces back to me um, and so I'm just running this this MQTT message and now one thing that's kind of neat is that um, I'm hoping that maybe somebody else will watch this video at roughly the same time as you, um, and you'll see other people's messages pop up, right? Because you're publishing uh, to this topic, and you're subscribed to listen to this topic, and right now you're you're kind of in this chat room by yourself. Uh, but if somebody else watches this video at the same time as you, uh, they're actually gonna you're gonna see their messages, and and they'll see your messages. So it's kind of a silly little chat thing. So I'm hoping somebody um, talks to somebody else. So you can say is. Is anyone out there? Uh, and you can spell things right or not. Um, oh, you can hit enter on this. So enter works too. Um, and you can see that as I do these, uh, they just print to the console. Um, so just go ahead and leave this up uh, while I'm talking. So just kind of move this over to the side uh, while you're kind of watching this video and, and see if anybody else pops into your chat window. Um, and so that's a demo. Uh, I like to start with demos, but we want to understand what on earth is happening here. I kind of told you that you're sending messages to a server and you're getting messages from a server, uh, but kind of how does that all work? Um, and I think the first thing I want to talk about is uh, is topics, right? Um, oh, and by the way, I, I kind of glossed over this. Uh, this whole Lego 99 thing, uh, this comes from uh, the libs folder. Uh, there's this MQTT remote message calls. Um, and right now you're listening to Lego 99 um, because uh, this value is set to 99 right here in your remote method calls. Eventually you're going to change that to your team number, but don't do it yet, right? So I just thought I'd mention uh, that um, that Lego 99 thing is coming from your code. Eventually it's going to be your Lego number. I recommend that you don't change it now because you also want to change it on your robot. 
And if you change it now, you're going to forget to actually update the file to your robot. So don't change it yet. Wait till your robot's with you uh, and change it like in the modules uh, as you work the, the MQTT unit. All right, so there are different parts of MQTT. Uh, the first part is getting connected. Uh, so you need to get connected to the server, obviously. Um, and you've got to decide what server uh, are you going to connect to. Um, and then you're going to be publishing and subscribing topics. Uh, so the question of what server are you going to connect to um, is by default, 100% of the time, I expect that you'll use the default server, uh, which is mosquito.cssc.rollsholman.edu. So I'm telling you this, but to be honest, I don't really expect you to change it. That server runs uh, on the rolls Holman campus. Um, so long as you're connected to the rolls Holman network, you'll be able to use that server uh, for your MQTT messages. If you are off campus, that server is going to stop working, right? So just kind of be aware that like, if you take your robot off campus for some reason, you won't be able to get to that server. It's firewalled, right? Um, if you're in that case, you'd have to connect to a different server. Uh, one server that I'm going to use in some demos here is called uh, broker.mqtdashboard.com. Uh, um, uh, some other company runs that server and it's publicly available, right? So you can use it on campus or off campus. And I'm gonna use that with some demos that I've got. The reason I'm gonna use that one with some demos that I've got is that they've also got a tool where you can kind of like sniff for packets and you can kind of see what's happening. So I'm gonna use that for some of my demos uh, here in just a minute. Uh, what the heck, I can go ahead and change this code. So leave, leave yours up, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and change my code just to kind of show you something. Uh, and so what I want to do here is I want to, uh, so by default, when you connect uh, to a server, you don't have to say what server you're connecting to because uh, you'll just get the rules home by default. Um, but if you want to, you can actually connect to a specific server. So here I'm going to connect to that um, that other server, that broker MQT dashboard. Um, and so now I'm going to run it. Um, and the reason I'm connecting to that one is that I'm going to do some, some message sniffing, right? Um, and so in order to do some message sniffing, uh, they've got this tool. Uh, so this is my GUI window down here, and then this is their tool, uh, to where I can sniff for messages. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, in this tool, listen for Lego 99 uh, topic name messages. So I'm going to uh, push to that area, and I'm also going to subscribe to that same area. Um, so now as messages come in, I'll see them here. So I'm going to say, hello, this is a message. And I'm going to click send. Um, and what that does is that sends a message to the server. Um, and this little packet sniffer guy, uh, he sniffed it out and he said, hey, I got this message. Um, and it's got a, this kind of interesting format to it. Um, it says type, print message, payload. Um, and then you can see the payload is a list. So whenever you do communication, both ends have to agree to some uh, protocol, um, also called a message schema. Um, and so here we've got um, a message schema, and every time I send a message, uh, you can see it's got a type uh, and it's got a payload. Um, and interestingly, if we go look at uh, the code over here, um, we can see that in order to send messages, um, we just say send message uh, and we put in two arguments uh, and we'll talk about more of this. We put in a string and we put in a list um, and what gets sent is kind of this, this bigger message. So there's some things that are handled under the hood for you. Uh, but one neat thing about it is that if you know the protocol, uh, you can actually send uh, from other tools. So this is from the Hive Mind or Hive MQ uh, sniffer tool. Uh, and so if I publish this, uh, then I can see that that message also went up. Uh, and I can see that in PyCharm, I should have received that message. That was from the HiveMind sniffer tool. Uh, so this, this tool lets you kind of see what's going on under the hood. Let's talk about it for a little bit. Um, and so in order to uh, send messages, uh, you always have to send the two pieces. You have to say what topic you're on uh, and what message you're on. And so here's just kind of an example uh, of one that says hi. The topic uh, is a string, um, and the, the message is also a string. So they're both just strings. I think that's neat, by the way, that it's so simple. They just, you send up two strings, uh, and all this magic stuff happens to the server. The topics are always kind of formatted to look kind of like folder paths. Um, the way we're going to use it in our class is the first part of the folder path is the Lego number, so it'd be like Lego 01, Lego 02, um, here it's Lego 99. And then there's a slash, that's just how they're typically formatted. 
Um, and then there's whatever topic name you want to publish this message to. So you always send up some topic name. Usually the topic name is not the word topic name, uh, but here it is, right? Next thing you do is you send a message. The message is a string. Uh, it's always a string. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to format it using what's called JSON. Uh, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Uh, but it's a very, very, very popular uh, schema for doing communication uh, and lets you send more complex messages. Uh, so this is a string. Uh, so it's been what's called JSON stringified. Um, and so it's got kind of a curly brace at the start and the end here. Um, and it's got, it's, a, it's a, like a Python dictionary, right? So it's got a type. Uh, and it's got a payload, uh, and the type is print message, and the payload here is high. Now, I could have named these different things, but what's really happening here is it is calling a method. Um, and so you can see that it's calling the method print message, um, and so the type is really what method do you want to call on the other end. And then the payload um, are arguments to that. So here the payload is message. So what's happening here is it's saying, hey, I want to publish uh, something to the topic Lego 99 topic name. Um, and it's going to have a message which has a type and a payload. Uh, and the type tells what method to call on the other end. Uh, and then the payload is what arguments you want to pass into that method. So that's how we're going to kind of structure uh, things in this class. And with this example, um, as many people uh, in the world, you could have a thousand people uh, that are listening uh, to this topic, uh, and then you could have you know a thousand people that are publishing messages to this topic. Um, and so I've been kind of showing a demo, but you can see in yours if anybody else has uh, has talked to you yet, right? Maybe somebody's talked to you uh, if you're watching this at a popular time. So that's kind of uh, one example of communication. What we're going to do much more in this class, though, is instead of talking like from your computer to yourself, right, which is kind of a weird thing to do, we're going to regularly talk from your computer uh, to your EV3's computer, right? So you're talking from computer to computer still. Um, and so let's just kind of show an example of this. Uh, and so here is um, a topic. So we're publishing this to LEGO 01. Um, and this um, topic is called Message for EV3. So I'm going to put this up to the server. My EV3 is subscribed to listen uh, to whatever the LEGO number is message for EV3. Uh, and here's an example of drive uh, payload. Uh, let's just go ahead and I'm going to run this. So this is the, um, the example you saw uh, uh, in the first video, right? Uh, so this is the remote drive app. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect um, from Python, or sorry, from my computer, um, to this weird broker so that I can sniff for the messages. You won't ever use that broker, broker but I'm going to do it uh, so I can sniff for messages. So you can just watch this demo. Uh, so I'm going to run this guy and so it says, hey, um, I have connected to the broker, uh, broker MQTT dashboard. I'm publishing to the topic um, Lego 99 messages for EV3 and I'm subscribed to a topic as well, messages for PC um, and it opened this to Kenter GUI, uh, which is cool. So now what I can do is I can open up my, my sniffer tool over here uh, and I can uh, subscribe to a different topic. So I no longer care about that topic. Uh, so now I'm going to subscribe to Lego 99 uh, messages for EV3. So if I was an EV3, these are the, the messages that I would get. Um, I'm not going to publish anything right now. I'm just going to listen. And so uh, what we can do here is I can click these buttons. So if I click the forward button, uh, what should happen is it should have showed up over here. Oops, <laughs> I said messages for EV4. Uh, let me subscribe to the correct topic. So messages for EV3. Uh, and now let me send something. So that was an excellent example of you only get the messages that you're subscribed to, right? Um, and so you can see that this sends the message drive and payload. And now the interesting thing is, is that if I run uh, on my EV3 here, so uh, here I'm connected to, uh, to this robot, um, I could run over here uh, M5 uh, EV3 remote drive. So I'm, I've, I've got a finished solution, right? Um, and so this guy is also going to uh, connect to that broker uh, and he's going to have things that he's published to and he's subscribed to. Uh, so I'll let him go ahead and get started here.
Uh, and so now you can see he's up. So he connected to uh, that weird broker, so I could do sniffing. Um, and he is publishing to messages for PC. So you can see he's kind of the reverse of this guy, right? So he's publishing to messages for PC, and he's subscribed to uh, messages for EV3. So now uh, I've got some neat things going on. So I can actually send a message, um, and you can you can tell by the sound uh, that he he got the message. So I sent this up to the broker. Uh, he subscribed to it. Uh, if I say stop, uh, you can see I've got a special message called stop that he's got here. Uh, I can do things like arm up, um, and he'll subscribe to the arm up uh, commands, uh, and he'll get it. I can say arm down. Um, and I like this sniffing tool because you can kind of see what all is uh, going on here, which is kind of neat. Um, and, you know, he can turn left, um, and so he says drive, and he's got a payload for the arguments. Um, and so you can see that you can do things with no arguments. Uh, you can do things with multiple arguments. You could also do things with one argument. By the way, with one argument, you still put it into a list. Um, and there's, uh, there's just all kinds of neat things you could do here. So I'll just kind of quit that example. Uh, but this kind of shows you how uh, MQTT uh, really works. Uh, by the way, you could also send messages uh, in the other direction, uh, which is kind of fun. Uh, you can also... Um, cheat and send messages like from your um, from your sniffer tool here, right? So I'm kind of getting off topic here, but if I wanted to, I could actually send a message for uh, EV3 from here, uh, and I could say drive, uh, and I could say in the payload, hey, give me a nice slow 200, 200, uh, and I could publish that. Um, and you can hear that he is also like doing the thing here. So the neat thing about it is that it's a, a big like Internet of Things tool. I guess I should stop him. Uh, and so to stop him, I just need to send that. Um, and so it's a very popular Internet of Things tool because you can communicate from different types of devices. Uh, and there's all kinds of exciting things you can do, right? Um, and so here's an example of uh, the um, EV3 can also send messages back. So for example, here I'm sending back what button was pressed. So I'm like, I'm pressing buttons. Uh, on here in this example, and it sends message back. And I can show you that demo, but I think you get the idea. It works and it's cool. Uh, oh, what the heck, I'll demo it. Uh, so to demo this guy, I've got to uh, kind of do things. I've got to run a, a program on my computer, uh, which uh, makes it to Ken Tergui. Uh, this program on my <laughs> uh, This button on my computer is connected to this broker. Uh, he's publishing to that topic, subscribe to that topic. Uh, and I started it on my EV3 already, and you can see he's publishing and, and talking to the reverse things. So this example, um, if I wanted to, I could hit the, the green uh, button on here, or I guess I should turn some of them out. Uh, but you can see that I'm, I'm sending messages to control uh, LEDs, uh, and you can see I'm saying what I'm sending, and down here I'm saying what I'm receiving, right? Uh, and I can also do uh, messages the other direction, so I can say button down, um, and you can see that I'm saying what I'm sending on the EV3 uh, and saying what I'm receiving on my computer up here. It gets kind of confusing when you've got your computer um, and your EV3 on the same monitor, uh, but that, that's just how it works. Um, and for what it's worth, you could totally like uh, sniff these messages too. Uh, so let's say you wanted to sniff messages uh, that are going to the PC as well. Uh, and so now if I hit uh, the up button here, uh, I can see what uh, messages come through. So it says button pressed up. If I did down, uh, you can see that that's being sniffed as well. Uh, and you can also see a change on here, right? So if I hit the, uh, I think it's the left button, uh, you can see that the message was sent with left and it showed left there. If I instead hit, um, I don't know, red on here, you can see that red turns on here. Uh, and you can see it says left red uh, in, the, in the server here too. Uh, so kind of a long video, I got a little long-winded there. Uh, but that is uh, communication uh, under the hood, how it works. Next time, we're going to talk about what you need to do in your code uh, to use this API. All right, see you then. Bye.